We are behind the scenes right now. If you look around, you can see we don't have any animals right behind me. We're actually in an area called the Nature Trail. We do a lot of classes and programs up here. It's kind of one of those behind the scenes area where we actually have some space to do some things, some moving around, some running around, and a little bit of exploring. So, on a rainy day like this, a lot of you might be thinking, what am I supposed to do with my kids? What am I supposed to be doing with myself? It doesn't mean you have to stay inside. A little bit of rain is okay. We're in East Tennessee, we're used to it by now. But there's also a lot of other things that live around here that, well, they really like the rain. They love it outside on days like this. One of those things is the salamander. So we're gonna actually spend some time flipping over some logs, flipping over some rocks, and seeing what kind of things we can find out on a day like this, because this is perfect for them. They need to keep their skin a little bit moist, a little bit slimy, so on a wet day like this, you're more likely to see them out running around, moving, and trying to find something to eat. Cause I don't know about you guys, but I could use a snack on a day like this. So, we're just gonna flip over some logs. Never know what you're going to see. There have been days I flipped over a log and I found nothing. There are days I flipped over a log and somebody's flipped back over and said, oh no, this is my log, you can't come under here. So, let's just start right over here. Of course, we see a whole lot of earthworms. We see some bigger ones. We see some smaller ones hiding underneath. We also see, oh, there's somebody actually trying to crawl away on a leaf. So earthworms will often come out on days like this. Some of you might remember growing up fishing and when it's raining out, that's the day you go out and try to find as many earthworms as you can. The most important thing when you're looking for anything under a log, a rock, anything, is make sure you put it back where it belongs because imagine, Somebody walks up to you, pulls the roof off of your house, and then just leaves it there. It's really, really hard to put it back. So, we're gonna check a couple other spots and see if we can find these salamanders today. All right, who do we find in here? We have a little millipede right here. Now, millipedes have a really, really important role in a place like this. They are actually the ones responsible for basically breaking down all this stuff you see here. All these little bits of leaves, all the little bit of dirt, they basically make soil. They eat everything you can find. Little tiny, tiny little, almost kind of look like white fleas. These little guys are called coleopteran. They're little tiny, tiny, tiny insects. And that's what they do as well. They just break down and make soil. So you might never recognize them, but they're absolutely key to make sure we have a healthy environment around here. And they're also really, really good at telling us something about air pollution, about air quality. Because snail shells are basically made of one of two things. They're made of proteins, and those ones are usually kind of shiny, or they're also made of calcium. And the thing about calcium is calcium doesn't do really well when you have acids around. So, in our case, we're in the rain. Acid rain is sometimes a problem. That can actually cause trouble for their shells, and it can actually dissolve them to some degree. So if you have a lot of shells, a lot of snails, that have that calcium-based shell, that's actually a pretty good sign that your air quality is improving. Now, I'm gonna put him right back where I found him. Some of you might be thinking, but Chris, if you set this giant log on top of a snail, that snail's gonna have a bad day. <laughs> that's why you put them back pretty much where you found them. Because if you found them under a log, that means there's a little gap there, there's a little hole there, and if you're not sure, like right here when I pulled this up, all of this muck kind of moved a little bit. So if you want to, if it makes you feel better, you can also put the log down and then set them next to it. Because if they climbed under the first time, they can climb under again. I like to say it's better to be safe than sorry. If you're not sure, might as well be safe. Oh, he got away. Oh, that was a big one. Oh, looks like something we might want to play with, might want to look at. So this little guy is upside down right now. And he's kind of curled up in a ball. And there we go. We have our first salamander of the day. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves, why didn't I just grab him and pick him up and scream like a small child would? And the reason is, salamanders, at least around here, most of them don't actually breed the same way we do. A lot of them breathe through their skin. Especially the ones we have in East Tennessee. And if they breathe through their skin, that means they have some special adaptations we don't want to mess with. In their case, that slimy skin actually helps them to breathe. So oxygen just moves back and forth. So, they have that same kind of mucous membrane that we have on our eyes or inside of our nose. So imagine having that covering your whole body, then somebody with a really, really soapy hand 
because I hope you're washing your hands. Imagine that gets all over your body. That's going to hurt a lot and that can actually be really, really bad for them. So when you're picking up a salamander, the way to do it is to put them on top of a leaf, is to use maybe the bottom of a plate, a cup, but you don't want to pick them up right with your hand because you just want to make sure that they're going to have a good time too. Um, around here we have somewhere between 25 and 35 species of salamander depending who you talk to. Um, the Great Smoky Mountains is what's called the ca uh, salamander capital of the world. There's more species of salamanders there than there are any other comparably sized area on earth. The hard thing is, this is what I'm going to call a dusky species. Dusky salamanders, there are a whole lot of different types and they all kind of look similar. They all look kind of that dark brown, dark gray color and without getting to really, really complicated genetics, it can be really hard to tell. There are actually some researchers out there that say there actually aren't as many species as we think just because they're closely enough related. So unfortunately there's not a great way to tell. Um, but if you look online, sometimes you can find some guides. Sometimes they're fluorescent colors. Around here we actually have some that are fluorescent red or fluorescent yellow. So those ones are pretty easy, unfortunately. This guy, he's going to remain a mystery for us. Just because it's a little bit wet out, it's always a good time to get your hands dirty and have fun exploring. <laughs>